Hey YouTube, this is Die Fly Fish. Just want to show you, uh, tonight's experiment is going to show you the difference between black oxide and red oxide for copper, utilizing the magnesium with the oxide layer that I've created vis-a-vis uh, -vis the electrolysis using the zinc oxide, Epsom salt, um, iron pirate, and galena mix. So, in any event, I placed a few drops of water onto this non-conductive layer. And I'm going to take this piece of copper that I have the red oxide on it. We're going to register the voltage, okay? So registering the voltage, you're going to see here um, the difference between the red oxide and the black oxide and its output, okay? So th all things being said equal, if I take this piece of copper and I place it onto the interface of the salt, that's what we're showing from a voltage standpoint. One point four, one point five. Okay, now I'm going to take this off and I'm going to utilize the black oxide. And again, what we have here is just an infinitely thin layer of oxide that was formed vis a vis the electroly electrolysis. And um, again, it's the, the black oxide or the copper. And again, watch the voltage with this. So there's a difference. And the black oxide is what we're looking for. So, utilizing an infinitely thin layer of this oxide, um, we can definitely have a very, very nice crystal battery. And again, what I'll do just for grins is I'll turn this to the milliamp hour amount, still utilizing the black oxide layer here. We'll be able to ascertain what the current flow is utilizing, you know, precious little electrolyte, basically just the oxide layer here. So utilizing just the oxide layer over 30 milliamps. So for what's worth, uh, again, that's not even fully wetted. You can see the contact area there is less than optimal. Now let's see what it would be if we can add a little more water to it. See if we can increase the... I've got this thing dripping. Let's see what the current flow is if I really have a nice little oxide layer there. about the same. So for what it's worth, 35 milliamps or so thereabouts with no other form of electrolyte. Thought you might find that interesting. One other thing I want to show you. Um, I have the multimeter set at the 200 mega ohm range resistor. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what the normal magnesium has as a resistance versus the oxide layer treated magnesium. And both these came from United Nuclear Supply. This magnesium is covered with zinc, so you need to uh, sand it off before you work with it. So for what it's worth, here is the two um, DMM leads. I'm going to place on the magnesium right now, okay, like so and that shows 0.9 mega ohm resistance okay from right here do the same thing now with this piece of magnesium that has the oxide layer from the zinc oxide epsom salts galena and iron pyrite and you will see that when they're both down 
it's a non-conducting layer. I'm going to do that again. So here we have and nothing showing there, okay? So it's a non-conductive layer that forms on this magnesium and that's what I think prevents the magnesium from being deteriorated. So again, this is 100% non-conductive. If I add a drop of water or two, it allows us to do the little battery action. So for what it's worth, again, this oxide layer, in addition to the black cupric oxide layer, is very important. So for what it's worth, Hopefully this helps in making some of these cells. Have a great night.